Welcome to Against the Spread, where we here at Sportsnet pick games for you, NFL games, that is, against the spread. We were much better at doing that a couple weeks ago than we have been recently, but we're, we're not going to mention that. We're not going to talk about it. Uh, we're just we gonna at least to... try to pick against the spread. Right, yeah. You know, we're trying. Exactly. Yeah, although we had some bad beats last week, so uh, I think we're going to bounce back. Um, and, and we've got to start a game with a tough line with two teams that – have been tough to read in terms of betting. The Colts go to Tennessee. This could be a potential uh, playoff preview. Tennessee at home favored by minus two. Where are you leaning in this one? I'm going to go with a gut pick, which may be a terrible way to get this underway. But as soon as I saw this game, I looked at this game last week uh, because I was wondering when these two teams were going to meet up for the first time because this division is going to be tightly contested, I think. And my gut tells me the Colts, and I'm going to go with the Colts. I'm not going to think too much about this. And and I think it's because their defense is so good. You know, they're, we saw Phillip Rivers struggle on the weekend, and he became a meme, a meme for 2020 uh, as he tried to make a tackle on a, on a fumble return. But I really do like their, their defense, and uh, I'm not all that convinced by the Titans' uh, defense itself. So I think Phillip Rivers, despite their struggles on offense, uh, Indy will be able to put up some points and hold the Titans. Um, so I'm going to take the Colts to, to take this and and to take an advantage in that division. I was going to lean Colts. I thought these teams are pretty evenly matched, so give me a couple points. But I'm actually going to leave – I'm going to lean Tennessee. And, you know, part of the reason, is you mentioned, Tennessee's defense hasn't been great. But like the Ravens, they are opportunistic. And we saw what turnovers did to switch that ball game. Uh, and I, I do think in terms of styles, you will see a similar approach. Run heavy, run the quarterback heavy. The same thing the Ravens did with success against Indy, specifically in that second half, I think Tennessee can do. Uh, so I'm going to pick the Titans against probably my better judgment in the Thursday nighter at 820. We'll see. Philly to, uh, goes to New York. I really don't have good judgment on either of these teams. Um, one has a talented roster that plays really down to their opponent. Another has a roster that's not very talented, but they play hard all the time. Uh, on the road, the Eagles are three and a half point favorites. Where are you going to this one? There could be reason to believe that the Eagles should take a step forward after a week off and they're leading their division. They're 70% favored to win, but there's, they've shown us zero that they have the capability to do that. Um, you know, that game against Dallas was one of the most frustrating victories I've ever seen as an Eagles fan, just because of how careless Carson Wentz was with the ball. And, you know, if it wasn't for the Ben DiNucci led offense, I think we, the Eagles would have lost that game. So uh, I'm going to take the Giants. The last time these two teams played, like you said, the Giants played hard. It was a one point game. The Eagles had to come back from 11 down. Uh, with four minutes left to play. So I think it's going to be just as close, if not a Giants win. Uh, I'm taking the Giants as well. I'm not really certain, given the fact that the Giants have had a couple moral victories and the Eagles have had a couple games where they, they probably should have won if they played close to their level of talent, despite the real injury scenarios that they've had. Um, these two teams are pretty close, and I'll take the home team with some points, so I'm going to take the Giants. Uh, another couple teams that aren't that great. Washington goes to Detroit. This time the home team is favored in, by three and a half points. That is the Detroit Lions. Uh, who do you like in this one? The Lions are 0-3 at home so far this season. And while those games have come against better teams than the Washington football team, they've been brutal losses. They blew a 17-point lead in week one. They blew 14 points against the Saints. And they allowed 40 points to that Colts offense that we just said was really bad at scoring points so if alex smith can add anything to this washington offense anything more than they've got over the last you know eight weeks to complement what is a really good defense already i think that washington can uh, at least keep this game close if not win it on the road so i'm going to go with washington yeah it's not odd it's not often that you say this but it's quite odd when you say it the Washington football team's third-string quarterback gives them the best chance to win. 
Uh, and, and last seen, the third string quarterback when um, he had limbs that worked uh, was much better than the quarterback play they've gotten from Allen or Haskins this year. So I, I do think Washington can be a little bit more competitive. Uh, I, I do think this is going to be the Alex Smith, give him the comeback player of the year award, basically name it after him game because Detroit's defense has not been great. Uh, and, and so I, I like Washington's cover, um, if not win outright with the spread at three and a half. Oh, I, I don't think the dog is going to win outright in this next one. The question is whether or not they cover because it's a pretty big spread. Jacksonville goes to Green Bay. The line is 13 and a half points. Do you like the Packers in Wisconsin against the Jags? This spread, I feel like part of the reason I'm getting killed in the last few weeks is because I can't correctly predict double digit point spreads. They're just, I, I go one way, it's close. I go the other way, it's a blowout. Um, so I, I did a little bit of research on this one. Not much, but uh, I mean, the Jags are bad. We know that. But but how big have the Packers been winning? And they've been winning really big. They, they haven't, uh, in four of their six wins, have been by this 14-point spread or 13 and a half. So uh, I feel like the Packers are going to cover. They've beaten good teams by this amount. So one of the worst teams in the NFL at this point in time, I'll take Aaron Rodgers for sure. Yeah, I'm taking Rodgers as well. Um, you see how good that offense is when, you know, they're closer to healthy. They got a little bit extra rest uh, before the Sunday matchup at 1 o'clock, so I, I got the Packers in this one. Uh, Houston at Cleveland. Again, these are two rosters that on paper have some big-name players, but at times they've looked a little bit flawed. The Browns are at home, thus we give them the three-point spread as the favorites at home. Uh, where are you leaning in this one? The Texans were one of those teams that killed me last week, too. They they looked, and I, I'm pretty sure you took the Jaguars, so good on you, but I thought I had that one in the bag, and the Texans just blew it. The Texans' defense just couldn't stop uh, a seventh-round rookie. So that's a huge reason why I'm going the Browns. The other big reason is because Nick Chubb is coming back, and we talked a lot early on before Nick Chubb got, got hurt about how he and Kareem Hunt made up what would probably be the best backfield in the NFL. So you bring back Chubb, have Hunt as a complementary piece and a really aggressive offensive line against the Texans run defense that has been the worst in the NFL halfway through. I'll take the Browns at home by a field goal, given all of those circumstances. Yeah, just look at the health of the backfields. David Johnson probably going to be down for this one. You mentioned it, Chubb comes back. Unless you foresee this being the Duke Johnson revenge game, uh, certainly the Browns are going to be able to control the clock, and they should win this one pretty comfortably. So three points doesn't scare me whatsoever. This next one is going to be really interesting. Certainly there's going to be some playoff implications, but I think it's just going to be some good football. Uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers look to, to bounce back. They go to Carolina. The line is four and a half. Um, about two or three weeks ago, that line would have seemed crazy. But given the direction that these two teams have gone, I don't think it is. Where are you leaning? I was initially leaning with the Panthers in this game because I think when I looked at this yesterday, it was six. The spread was six. Now it's four and a half. Uh, but two factors have changed my mind uh, for going with the Buccaneers. One is that it sounds like the, the Panthers are going to be without Christian McCaffrey again and he just brings so much to that offense we saw it over the weekend they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chiefs and he was a huge part of it if he misses that game they're so much more inconsistent without him in the lineup uh, and the second thing is that the Brady and the Bucks are gonna be angry they got embarrassed by a division opponent on Sunday Night Football in front of everybody uh, and and until um, or if they play bad in this game I'm not going to rule them out. So I'm going to go with what should be an angry Bucks team, an angry Tom Brady, an angry defense, uh, and I'll take them to cover what really is a relatively small spread on the road in Carolina. Yeah, normally I would agree with you, and that would have been my methodology, but they should have been angry going into last week's game against the Saints. Remember against the Giants, they didn't score in the first half. That was not a good offensive performance. They, you know, were lucky to, to win because eventually Daniel Jones wasn't able to make enough plays 
Teddy Bridgewater may not make big plays, but he's playing within himself. But most importantly, the Panthers have been pretty good defensively, specifically getting pressure against the passer. When you look at the Bucs, last week Brady was pressured on 46% of his dropbacks. But in their wins, in their six wins, they've only given up four sacks. In their three losses, they've given up nine. I don't know if they're going to lose this game, but I do think it's going to be a struggle. So I, surprisingly, and I'm, it's even surprising I'm saying it out loud, but I'm going to go with the Panthers to, to cover in this one. Um, another line around the same two divisional matchups, Denver goes to Las Vegas. And after the line being three and a half, it's moved all the way to five already for the kickoff at 4.05 p.m. Eastern. Who do you like in this one? I've had a really time believing in, a really hard time believing in the Raiders, even though the results have been good and the eye test is good. This team is playing much better than they have the first two years under Gruden. Um, but it's still been really hard for me to kind of shake the Raiders, you know, I, what the Raiders have been for the last two decades. Um, but if you look at how they've been against the spread over the last uh, month, they're three and one, and that includes a really big win over uh, Kansas City. Um, and then you look Denver, they're three and three against the spread in their last six, but two of those wins are against the Pats and the Jets, who at the time were very bad offenses. Um, so I've, I've looked into it enough and convinced myself enough that I'm going to finally trust in these Raiders. And I think they'll be able to take biz- take care of business uh, against what has been a pretty disappointing Denver offense so far this season. It has been, but you know we're starting to see some signs from Judy. I, I, I do think Drew Locke is coming a, along nicely. So I, I think five points is a little too too much for, for teams that, you know, I, I don't think there's that much difference in terms of talent. Um, and so I'm actually going to take the points and I'm going to go with Denver. I was going to feel the same about the next – game but then I was somewhat surprised to see who the underdog is the Buffalo Bills are two point dogs after probably their best performance of the year maybe of of Josh Allen's um, career short career in Buffalo they go to Arizona another team trending up uh, and the Cardinals at home are minus two favorites where are you leaning in this one I love the quarterback matchup in this one first of all like like you said Josh Allen is coming off the best performance of his career and I think it's not only because he threw for 400 yards but because he got sacked seven times and didn't turn the ball over which for Josh Allen is a remarkable feat and on the other side Kyler Murray who is probably one of the best running quarterbacks I've ever seen and then he's got a rocket of an arm so I'm really looking forward to seeing how these two uh, go toe to toe in what could be a high scoring game Um, but when I think about the Bills after what they did last week, I thought for sure they'd be favorites. And so to get them as underdogs, I'm going to I'm gonna take the Bills. I really like what they did last week. I think they're going to keep doing it against a team that gave up a lot of points to the Dolphins just last week. I did think the Bills would be favorites because of what's happened recently. Um, and I was comfortable picking the Cardinals as a dog. And I'm still going to stick with the Cardinals, even though they're two-point favorites. I just can't can't see as good as Buffalo's been playing. I can't see them just running through the NFC West uh, to, for me, w- which is the probably the toughest division in football. Uh, and, and for all those reasons, as good as Buffalo, uh, you know, looked against Seattle, um, you know, a couple weeks prior, they didn't look so dominant. And so I'm going to pick the Cardinals in this one. You mentioned it. We're getting spoiled this week in terms of uh, exciting young quarterbacks that we get to see go head to head. And there's probably no better example of that than this next game. The Chargers go to Miami uh, after Justin Herbert had played well this year. Tua in his second game really, really shone. And that's why the Dolphins are two and a half point favorites. Is that too many points too early? It's not for me. And it comes down to coaching. I'm going to bet on coaching in this game. And what we've seen from the Dolphins is, is that Brian Flores is an excellent coach. Not only does he now have a really talented quarterback who protects the ball very well um, when compared to Ryan Fitzpatrick, but he's, he's got one of the best coached defense, uh, defensive units in the NFL. And they're, they're scoring in a bunch of different ways. They're scoring on special teams. Um, and on the opposite sideline is Anthony Lynn, who, you know, by all accounts is a great guy, but is really too conservative when he coaches and makes some really poor uh, decisions in clock management. And it's ended up hurting this team 
over and over and over again. 20 of his 28 losses as the Chargers head coach have come within one score. That's more than bad luck. There's bad luck involved, but coaching is a big part of it. And so when I look at these two teams, coaching is the biggest difference maker here. And so I'm going to bet on the Dolphins and Brian Flores to get it done. Yeah, and I'm leaning that way as well because of the coaching. And the Chargers find ways to lose close games, as you mentioned. Six of those losses by seven points or less have been this year. They have six losses this year. Like, they are always in the game, and they always lose. On the flip side, Brian Flores, who for me, if not Mike Tomlin, he should probably be uh, the lead candidate for Coach of the Year. He had a lot of coaching to do this week. He was without five coaches on the sidelines uh, because of COVID-19 restrictions. You wouldn't have known the difference. They were prepared and played well. And I think that's going to be the case at home. I like Miami. I don't know if there was a team that was more prepared, more ready to play uh, than the Saints this week. They looked really, really good and reminded us why we thought they might be a Super Bowl contender going into the year. Uh, They now play the team who represented the NFC in the Super Bowl last year, the San Francisco 49ers, who are a shell of their former selves. And that's why this line is 10 points for the Saints. Start at six and a half. It's already at 10. Uh, uh, Get in now before it balloons any bigger. 68% 68% of the public still with the Saints. Are you uh, one of those people, Gilo? If they can put together a performance like they did uh, on Sunday night, I think I don't even think uh, the 49ers could keep within 21 points because that's how good they were. I mean, the Saints aren't going to play that well every game, obviously, uh, but everything clicked on offense. I mean, Taysom Hill, who I usually groan over every time he replaces Drew Brees in the game, was so impactful in that game, so physical, and and was a huge difference maker. And the defense, the defense finally looked like the defense we thought they were going to be in that game against the Bucks. And so if they even have uh, 75% of what they had uh, in that Sunday night game against this really banged up 49ers team, Nick Mullins just isn't the guy, and they don't have the playmakers to be able to keep up here, then um, I think the Saints should be able to take care of business here. And I'm taking another double digit spread, but I, there's no way I can pick the 49ers here. Yeah. And I, I think the Saints have now a hundred percent of their offensive talent in the line of healthy Emmanuel Sanders back after being out with COVID-19. Michael Thomas is back after being hurt and also punching a teammate and having to sit because of that. And Alvin Kamara looks as healthy as he has maybe in the last two or three years. You have all those offensive pieces, all of that motion, and all of a sudden Drew Brees has his deep ball again. Uh, And we saw what happens when Tampa Bay gave Drew Brees a steady dose of zone defense. He moved defenders with his eyes and was really accurate. Well, the San Francisco 49ers play a lot of zone defense. And I I think uh, just the way the Saints were able to put up a lot of points scored on the first uh, for the first five drives, I think, you know, they're going to be making the scoreboard do some work again uh, against San Francisco. And I like them big in this game. So 10 points is nothing. Uh, Seattle in the Los Angeles Rams, again, a, uh, a battle for the top of the NFC West. Close line in this one, two points. Uh, who do you like in this matchup? This is a tough one, like most NFC West matchups are, because, um, you know, usually these teams are – very good but I think this is this is tougher because of these teams showing a lot of flaws uh the Seahawks have what is going to or what is looking like at this point going to be an historically bad pass defense they've almost allowed 3,000 yards through the air so far this season which is a remarkable number um despite having right now who is an an MVP candidate in Russell Wilson uh and on the flip side the Rams can't beat good teams uh, they they're, they just got walled by the Dolphins before their back, and their only wins are against the NFC East and the Chicago Bears. So it, it makes it really tough because I don't really know if either of these teams um, are that good because of their flaws. But uh, if you give me Russell Wilson as an underdog, just like last week against the Bills, I know that backfired. But if you give me Russell Wilson as a as an underdog, uh, I'm always going to take him, especially when he's playing like he is right now. So give me the Seahawks. 
Uh, that was my thought exactly. Russell Wilson's the best player in the game. Uh, you know, he might be the most valuable player in the sport. I, I was caught myself before I said best because that's not the case. Um, but th- this team has been carried by him, and, and I don't expect to see them lose two in a row when to this point, because he's played so well, they've only lost two, period. And so I like uh, the Seahawks as short underdogs with the two points. I'll take that clearly. A bit bigger of a spread uh, for a team who, you know, famously didn't cover, but they won. So they kept a lot of survivor pools going. The Pittsburgh Steelers host the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, seven and a half points is the line after it was 10. Now, we should say, uh, as a clerical note, this game came off the board at some books for some while as the news came out that uh, Ben Roethlisberger has been put in the COVID-19 protocol. Now, he's expected to play. He's expected to to be you know, out in terms of being in the facility for around five days um, because it seems to be more of a contact tracing issue than actually a testing positive issue. But nonetheless, as is the case in 2020, all of that factors into how we see the team performing and thus how the line is. So with that, where are you leaning on this one, Julo? With or without Ben Roethlisberger, and like you said, it's pretty likely, or not pretty likely, it is likely that he'll he'll be in the lineup on Sunday. But with or without, I was going to go Bengals here uh, because mm. we've seen from Joe Burrow that he's had uh, the capability of keeping these Bengals in games that they have no business being in. Now, the one game that they were never in was a game against another tough AFC North foe when they got hammered by the Ravens. But what we saw from the Steelers was that it's an undefeated team that's starting to come into the middle of what is a grueling season, even normally, but under these circumstances, even more so as we're seeing this week. And, and they faltered a little bit against a quarterback who had never made um, a start in the NFL and against a defense that had been historically bad and they barely survived. So when they're bigger than a touchdown favorite um, against a division team that hangs in games, Uh, I saw this game immediately and and thought I was going to take the Bengals uh, and I'm going to continue to to lean that way. Yeah, even if Big Ben plays, he's still not going to be around the team getting reps, which really matters. And and he's going to be hobbled because, you know, we saw him have to leave the game against the Cowboys with with, uh, Wonky. He came back, got it out and played well. But, but as that thing tightens up at his age, it's going to be tough to manage moving forward. And, And as good as the Steelers have been, they've been really good. Uh, they're 8 no for the first time in franchise history. You know, seven of those uh, eight wins came in games that were decided by seven points or fewer. This line is at seven and a half right at the threshold. So the Bengals, who have made an art of playing teams really, really close, um, you know, they were basically the Chargers before the Chargers of playing close games with a rookie quarterback and then finding a way to lose. I think they're going to be in another close game in an AFC North uh, battle. And so I'm going to take the Bengals as well. Speaking of the AFC North, the team uh, chasing the Steelers for, for the top of it is the Baltimore Ravens. They go to the New England Patriots who finally uh, get a win um, for that. Uh, the Patriots are only, and I say only, seven-point underdogs uh, in this one. Uh, who do you like in this matchup? Yeah, the, the Patriots uh, narrowly avoided disaster, and as you mentioned before, so did many uh, survivors. Um, but I don't think they're going to be able to avoid disaster against what is now the best scoring defense in the NFL and the Ravens. And, you know, we've talked a lot about Lamar Jackson and the struggles that that offense has had. Um, But it's undeniable that the Ravens defense is one of the best in the NFL, if not the best. Um, And they're coming up against an offense that before putting up 30 points on, on the jets, which, you know, is fine. They won, but it's not a great achievement. They were averaging fewer than 13 points a game during that four loss uh, streak. So I expect the Ravens to keep that rolling in another loss for uh, the Patriots. And I actually expect the the Ravens offense to run a, a lot on this Patriots defense, which uncharacteristically is 25th against the run so far this year. So Ravens by a touchdown, I'll take that. Yeah, and I'm with the Ravens as well, and it's the math, not just the fact that, you know, Lamar Jackson got in the groove passing again and was 10 for 10 uh, throwing in the second half as he had to bring the Ravens back from a deficit at halftime for the first time in his career to do that and win against the Colts. But, but you mentioned that the 13-point you know, mark that the Patriots normally hover over. 
Well, this Ravens offense has scored 20 or more points in 31 straight games, longest streak in NFL history. And, and I just don't foresee the Patriots being able to score much more than 14 points against the Ravens defense, which might be the best in the league. Um, and, and so if the Ravens are just, you know, average offensively, they should win this game comfortably. So seven points is, is nothing for me in this one. And the last game, the Monday nighter, not a great Monday nighter. Uh, but it's all we got. Vikings going to <laughs> Chicago. The, the Vikings, the, the team with three wins, is on Monday Night Football, and they are two and a half point favorites on the road. I don't know if that is love for the fact that Dalvin Cook might be the most explosive runner in the game, or just disrespect and may, basically exhaustion uh, of the Chicago Bears. Where are you leaning on this one? The Bears are the most infuriating team to pick in 2020, and they have they have been the biggest team that has uh, had has hurt my record this this year. And I'm done. I'm done with the Bears. I'm not picking the Bears anymore. Uh, they're they're just they, they were terrible all game against the Titans, and they still almost covered, but they didn't cover. You know, and in and, and they would have covered every other game just because. Of, you know, I, I probably wouldn't have taken them three weeks ago. They would have covered. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. But I'm taking the Vikings because of Dalvin Cook, uh, outside of the fact that I hate the Bears. But Dalvin Cook has been unbelievable. He's he's in the MVP conversation now because uh, of the last two weeks. And, and he, he averaged almost 10 yards a carry last week against the, the Lions. How can – you not take a team with a guy that's running the ball like that. And it's making the whole Vikings offense work. They can do something the bears can't do. And that's score points. So give me the Vikings who are, you know, going to be in the playoff conversation because the bears are so bad. Philo, you need to know that the bears are who we thought they were. Uh, And and I don't want, I don't, I don't want, I don't even know what I thought they were, to be honest. That's why they're killing me. (laughs) <laughs> um, well, he, he, apparently, uh, it, you know, th- they were favored for a while. And, and finally, I think we, we were smart. Then we know we shouldn't have them favored, even though they have a better record than the Vikings. They're not a better team. So at home, I think they deserve to be dogs. And I think the Vikings will cover uh, in, you know, maybe some uh, Denny Green uh, memorial game, even though Denny Green was not with the Vikings when he gave the famous the Bears are who we thought they were speech. He was at that point with the Cardinals. Uh, I, I think the Vikings win, and we have another, and I'm set to say it, another bad Monday Night Football game. Uh, I, I don't think this one is going to be overly close. Uh, but, but to make the games interesting, we all join Survivor Pools to, to give us a rooting interest in a game that we otherwise would care nothing about. So who is your Survivor pick this week? It's going to be the Packers because um, when I looked at the schedule, that was the one that I that I picked out as a as a sure slam dunk um, after we both uh, barely survived uh, last week. And like I said, they win big when the Packers win, they win big, and and the Jaguars are playing like you know one of the worst teams in the NFL right now. So uh, give me Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I'm going to take the Saints. We did sweat out some victories. I want a comfortable viewing experience. The Saints are a team, again, getting healthy and playing better. The Niners are a team that aren't getting much uh, more injured because they've been injured all year, but they're not playing better and not doing a better job of coping with those injuries. Uh, So in a game of a couple offensive masterminds, I like the Saints in this one. That's my survivor pick. Uh, But we try to be masterminds in terms of who we pick and sometimes that goes better than others let us know what you think hit us up in the comments and while you're there like favorite share subscribe and most importantly enjoy the games thanks for watching